start recording. We have started recording. Oh, we've started recording. All right. <laughs> we have our preview screen, so we've got oh, the solder kit right. out there. We are previewing. Okay. Uh, howdy. Howdy. Hope we got everything ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. Okay. This is W1OEX Rex, and behind the computer screen, we got... Oh yeah, the, wa the waving, that's not me, that's the waving hand, that's Steve, N1SH, and uh, we're going to, uh, this is just a, a introductory to the Learn to Solder uh, WBB kit that we're going to do on Saturday. We're going to show a dry run and see how it goes. Um, so I, I have I have the kit in front of me. Uh, one of the things I added to the Learn to Solder uh, uh, mailing was a strip of resistors and a little proto board so one can actually practice their soldering before they attempt to do it with a real live kit. So I thought we'd do it quickly. Um, we'll set the kit aside and we'll do a little bit of, of soldering on this and I can show and talk about the principles of soldering, okay? Now I have a, I have a so learn to solder uh, YouTube video on my site so you can go look at that and I, I don't know how long that was, it was, it was quite long but I'm just going to recap that stuff relatively quickly so first thing I want to do is somehow we have to hold this board up and some people have vices and whatnot I don't use vices I use my my little patented little solder bots here well actually these are these are a brass set is what I call them and um, actually you know what I don't have to, I don't have to use these for this board right now so let me just get a pair of pliers. Um, okay. I got too many pliers to text choose from. <laughs> so many pliers in here. Okay. All right. Okay. I got a pair of nice flush cutting uh, pliers. They are flat on one. They're flat on one side and beveled on the other. So when you, you can go right down to the level of the board, when you shear it off, it's like cutting your grass down onto a putting green. You know, you can get it really, really short. So in this case, I'm just gonna cut off a couple of parts, a couple of resistors. We don't really care what value are they are. I just had a big bowl of resistors and I decided to, to uh, add some stuff to the kit so you can play around. So I have a lead forming tool. Uh, again, on my YouTube site, is a, a talk about tools and on the, the page for the Learn to Solder Kit, there's, there's a document that shows all the tools, where I got them from and what their part numbers are and the price. So if you're interested in buying some of these tools, uh, you know, it's like anything else. The, you know, having the right tool for the job makes the job a lot easier. Um, I just had to replace my well pump. It was 375 feet underground and we tried to to do that without the proper tools and that was a big mistake so i went to the rental place rented the the, the uh, proper uh pulley thing majiggy to pull it out of the ground and geez you know we tied it we bolted it off to a to the trailer hitch of the truck and pulled the thing right out of the right out 375 feet I had to go down my driveway down to the road and down to the next house okay so in this case, I just put two two resistors in. I didn't care what holes they're in because I'm, I'm just practicing. Uh, so I put two resistors in. I formed them on the lead forming tool. Typical resistors are are uh, uh, spaced at 0.4 inches. That's like not on the camera. That's not That's on the like camera. Back towards you. Okay. okay, he's trying to keep me honest yep. again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, now you see, uh, if I was trying to solder this thing it's kind of rockety so I mean I could actually um, I could actually use my little my little solder um, hole, board holes I will put those on it just so you can see how I'm going to show you how if I was soldering this it's, it's kind of rocky because you know it's uneven on the bottom so by putting these guys on it it forms little legs and keeps it up off the surface of the of the bench so I'll put four of them on. You can see they go on pretty quickly. And then, now when I set them down, this this board just stays perfectly, is perfectly happy, perfectly flat. It's not not rocky or anything. Uh, I have a off screen here. I have my soldering station. Um, 
this baby here. It's an analog, so I'm gonna turn it around. It's got an analog uh, gauge on it. I think I bought this thing in about 19, I'm guessing about 1995. I bet you I bought this and it's still going. I bought three or four of them. I still have all, all of them, they all run. I've got digital ones uh, upgraded. I've got I've got a really professional one, um, but this is this is one I have kicking around and I like it. it uh, I set my I set my temperature at 700 degrees. I prefer uh, there's many many different techniques about soldering and it's all based on on how you solder. In my case, I like a hot iron. I set it at 700 degrees. I get in. I I get it soldered and I get out of there really quick. Because the one thing you don't want to do is keep the iron on the part and wait for it to heat up because it it carries that heat all the way down to the part. Lots of parts don't really aren't really fussy about heat, but things like transistors and integrated circuits and, and certain things don't like a don't like excessive heat. Um, so anyway, so the other thing is you can see this this tip right here. Let's see, we got a close up view. It's a little bit on the dirty side because I, higher. huh? Higher? higher? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, actually, yep. I don't know if that helps any, but it's, it's kind of filthy because it's been sitting around. I don't know what I used this thing on last. But um, so what I'm going to do is, well, <laughs> what did I do with it? <laughs> I thought it was right here in the box. Oh, here it is. Okay, sorry about that. Um, some people use a wet towel, a wet paper towel. Um, some people use a wet sponge. Um, the problem is when you take a nice hot iron and you put it on a wet towel or wet sponge, the tip heats the, the water in there and turns it to steam, which takes a lot of heat out of the tip. So I use brass shavings, which is which is what I think is the best thing to do. So I go in there and twist it around and you can look, uh, see if I can get in there again, you can look and see how that tip now is very, very clean. Uh, since I haven't used it in a while, I also have something else that's in my box. Um, it's tip cleaner and tinner. Comes in a little, oh geez, I gotta put that thing down again. Come on. It's a... Well. <laughs> this is brand new. It must have glued the DM top on. Put my tools over in this and it's probably dropped the whole thing. <laughs> okay, there it is. All right, I got it out of there. Um, let's see. Uh, here's the this little thing of tip cleaner. It's basically tin in a in a in a base of um, um, a, a very cool flux. And I want to show you the difference between what that iron looked for looked at before I retinned it and what it looks like now. And I don't know if you can see how. I think you're getting too close to the camera. There you go. Okay. I mean, it is it is just so shiny. And um, so now when I go in, I clean it. A nice looking tip now so i'll just you only have to do that once to clean up the the iron so now that i got the iron clean i'm going to try soldering a couple of these parts and you know, the technique i guess i need some solder now I keep my solder in a in a plastic bag, Ziploc bag. You don't want it to get dirty, so you don't just throw it around and um, whatnot. You want to keep it as nice and clean, as shiny as possible. Um, and are you done mumbling around I'm over sorry. there? Oh my, huh? my, I don't know if that's coming in on the on the audio or not, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, this is just a dry run. I dropped okay. all my tools; they went everywhere. <laughs> All right, so I clean the tip of my iron, and what I do is, is the iron is now relatively it's hot and it's dry, so you add a little bit, a little dab of solder right there, and the idea is you're trying to put. Now in this case, I'm right-handed, so I have my 
my iron in my right hand, I put the dab on the left side, I would say the driver's side of the tip. So when I bring it in, I try to get that dab of solder so it hits both the lead that you're trying to solder and the pad. And you put it down there and you just let it set for a second. And sometimes you can actually see the color change and you just add a little bit of solder. That's it. There's nothing to it. Anybody can solder. <laughs> so again, very quickly, um, I'm going to clean the tip. I'll add a little dab of solder and I'll go in on the, on the left, the right hand side of that, hit that dab and I wait a second, put a little on, pull it away. Now it's kind of hard to, we don't have a really good close up camera for this, but you'll see that there's a, there's a fillet. It comes up and it rises up onto the, onto the um, lead and stops. If it's a, if it's a ball sitting on top, that's, that's what they call a cold solder joint. It, it hasn't really flowed to the different parts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, there we, we go. Yeah. That focuses right there. You got it. Just barely. Yeah, the only way you can do that with a really good close-up picture. We'll we'll put one on the. I'll I'll get a nice picture of it with my close-up camera, and then we'll have it so we can bring it. We can come into that. But you know the idea is with this bunch of parts is you just cut them down, and you know just practice that whole process of of now in this case I can use the lead forming tool, but I can also bend them with my fingertips. I don't. I've been doing this for 60 years. <laughs> I really don't need a lead forming tool to get four tenths of an inch, but but it's nice to do that. So I'll just put a couple more down. Now you notice when I set this down, see I can just set it down and and all my parts and stuff, whatever's on there will, will not make it tippy. And I'll just put a couple more in. Okay, and when you put them in, you just spread them just a little bit to, you know, you put a finger on the bottom of the part, on the bottom of the board, hold it up against the board, and just spread the leads out just a little bit to keep it from falling back down the holes. And then I clean it, put a little dollop on it, and I can go to town. I can just go in here. Now I'm going to put one finger on the board and hold it in place. And I'll go in there, put, make sure that dollop is sitting on both. Go in for the kill. I'll do it again. And now in the case of I got to go over here so I can just spin that board around and get it so it's comfortable at the same, the same space. And you can do several parts. You don't have to clean the tip every time, especially if you've got clean solder, clean parts. You're not picking up any dirt, but it's nice to, you know, you can do three or four parts and then clean your tip again. So that's all there is to solder it. It's not hard. Pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. What you want to do is, is uh, it's, it is good. I mean, everybody said it's too late for me. <laughs> I've been doing this for 60 years without any protection. So uh, you really want to create a draft so so any uh, smoke now everybody says oh you know you're bending over this and you get you get you know lead fumes well there aren't such a thing as lead fumes when you're soldering because the, it doesn't vaporize what you what you too. <laughs> yeah well it, it, some people are using lead free i i don't have lead free this is a this is a leaded solder uh, but the thing is you're also you're what you're smelling is the flux fumes and you know it's just you know you shouldn't be you shouldn't be inhaling anything that you don't have to inhale. So, so a lot of people put a little bit of a fan sucking air that way to keep it going. It's like being in the campfire where the smoke so keeps. So it blows it over towards me. Yeah, blows it over <laughs> towards Steve. That's right. So, so we're gonna we're gonna you know that's all there is. And and the idea is if you fill, use up all your so, your resistors and use your board and practice your soldering, you know you'll you'll get the hang of it. It doesn't take too long, but you, but if you know that you Iron's clean, dollop of solder, put it on the part. Try to get that little bead of solder so it hits both the pad and the, and the lead. Wait a second. And if you've got really good eyesight, uh, you'll actually see, you'll see that solder wick 
to the parts. I mean, the, once the parts heat up to the point where it melts and, and you got a good flow, the solder will actually flow off the the, the uh, iron onto the parts, or you'll see a color change. You'll actually see it, a phase change. And then you can add a little bit of solder to make that fillet, and then you're out of there. Um, and that's really, that's really all there is to it. Um, I was going to say something else. I had something about... Um, Biggest thing seems to be have a have a soldering iron at the right temperature. Right. If you if you're too low, if your solder if the solder melts at 400 degrees and you got your soldering iron set at 450, you can imagine you're going to have to sit that iron there and you're going to have to wait for it to transfer the heat to get all the parts up to 400. Yeah, because you don't want to wait a long time for the heat to then transfer to the other parts of the component. Right. Because what it's going to do is it's going to travel down the lead yeah. to the transistor, whatever it is. And you're just going to heat up that part. You want to hit it and get out quick. Hit it, get get the heck out of Dodge. Okay, so that's really all there is to that whole thing. And you can play around with it and see what's what what gives with that. So now we'll 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 break into the good stuff. Okay, uh, this kit here, the WBB, it's it's, I mean, it's a transmitter. It's very small amount of power. It's only 35 milliwatts with a nine volt battery. You can run it higher, but. In this case, for these billathons, I decided a classic mint tin kit, and I actually included the mint tin, and it has a sticky label for it, the Zomboids, which I did a long, long time ago. I designed this label, and I'll show you. I'll actually put That's it on the tin. The tin I had, had it printed right on the tin. It did. That's but a really old one, though. That was a really old one. Long time ago, probably the, the second thing I did. It was about 1997, 98. Um, Found, everybody was talking about Altoids tins, you know, Altoid mints. I hated, Altoids. I hated Altoids. <laughs> way too, I, and I hate peppermint. I hate peppermint. I love wintergreen is my is my flavor of choice. And I looked around and I found a company who would do custom screened oh. uh, wintergreen or spearmint mints. Yep. They were in Mexico. Uh, actually, they were in San Antonio, mm. Texas. But the factory, I think, was in Mexico. And uh, I had to order... So you had to get them with the mints. Oh yeah, they came with the mints, <laughs> and it was uh, it was like twenty two hundred dollars, and I had to order a thousand cans or something like that. I mean, I I can't remember what the price was so long ago, but I did. I made this little zomboids thing. I sent it down to them, and they printed it me up. Can I still have a case of them on my shelf? You know, they're they're fifteen years old at least, so maybe even seventeen years old. I wouldn't try them, but I do love the tins. So in this case. That's my new version is I have someone make the label so I get blank tints and put the labels on. So here's the kit. Here's how it comes. Come on. Get out of there. I'll set that aside. Um, nice little nice little routed board that just drops right in the mint tin. After you get this done, of course, you need all your, all your solder things are on the back side. So if you just drop it in the tin, it's going to short all this stuff out. So you have to find a piece of plastic or you know um cardboard or something and you put your board down when you're first building it and you just trace it out and when you cut it out you drop it in there drop it in the tin first then you drop the board on top and away you go um so in this case um i'm gonna quickly see what are we gonna talk about oh okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna set that aside for a minute and we're gonna look at the parts the thing about the wbb Part of it is is there's not a parts list here, is there? Um, there there is, but there isn't. Uh, I haven't put the new one up. We changed okay. it a little bit from the old one. Um, so I, I'm gonna do. I'll do that tonight when I get home. I was gonna do a new parts diagram, um, but it'll be on this page here with the right twenty two. QSO and Expo the the first time I did this, I was in the ballroom of the four day of May convention. And this was a, 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 a thing I tried to do for years, and I finally got someone to actually approve it. And we had 246 people in the ballroom, and they all built this kit using no soldering irons. It was a lot of work for me, but, <laughs> but we had no soldering irons. And the, the thing was, all the parts came pre-formed. Pre so this part is pre-cut, pre-bent. Uh, everything in here is the right spacing to fit on the board. So it, it goes together quickly. We only had a 45-minute 
um, symposium time slot, but it was at the end of the day, so we could drift a little bit later. And it took us an hour and 15 minutes, but we cleared everybody in the ballroom, mm. built their kit, and it tested or debugged working when they went out the door. Nice. It was pretty amazing. So this is a, a version of it where we have this, the board, and it's a solder version. So for, uh, for all you folks at home to learn to solder. So everything's all preformed. You don't have to worry about that. But the first thing you have to do is you have to sort all your parts out. So the easiest thing to do is sort stuff that's obviously the same or something that's quite obvious what it is. So you just pull them out of the pile um, and just keep on going. So I can, I can separate these things very, very quickly. Oops, I was going after that one. So there's the... Okay, so there's a switch, there's a transistor, um, there's capacitors, little yellow yellow things that have the leads on them, and you can see that there's two in that guy, there's one over here. So I'll just pull them out and set them aside. So what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm, I'm taking this thing and splitting it up. The ob I don't even know what they are, but the obvious things go together, and then you're left with, okay, here's some green things, so I'm going to put them... I'm going to put them along side and there's a brown one and then there's all the blue ones so i'll just put those down here okay so now i've i've separated all the parts in there and what you can do now is you can figure out just exactly what they are oops okay <laughs> so i don't have to explain i write that down that's a that's a crystal right this is a uh, this is a sip socket sip stands for single inline pin SIP, single inline pin. So here's a SIP socket, and there's one, two, three, four, five, there's six pins, and there are the sockets. So that's a that's a six pin SIP. This is a pair of jumpers. These go on on, let's say, for instance, a two pin header. The jumper goes on and shorts those two pins out. In the case of this kit here, one of those jumpers is the on-off switch. It's a cheap on-off switch. Okay. So there's a there's a three pin. Now this one, you can see it's single in line. It's three pins, but it's got it's got three um, pins. header pins. This is a male. The other one is a female. Okay, so this is a male a male header. So I'll put that thing back on there, and there's the on off switch. So there's a three pin male. Okay, here's a here's a sip. A three pin SIP socket. S C K T. Uh, we got a couple of these are the female part of the headers. So there's uh, two, a one by two. Um, those are the shells, right? Uh, that's a female, yeah. a female shell. And here's the males that go to make, make up with those. So here's a one by two. By 0.1 inch oh, so male, male header. Yeah. yeah, yeah, male header. Okay, so okay. here and here's, yeah. and here's the little pins that go inside the shell. So there's the pins, and we got uh, this is an SMA, SMA connect. Ooh, what? there's something missing in this in this kit already. Uh, RCA socket, RCA connectors. Yeah, you're right. My kit doesn't have RCA connectors either. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. It has the SMA. Well, there's no spot for the RCA connectors. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. The other kit. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the other kit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think, what? Come on. We, we kitted these things. We did it right, didn't we? Okay. All right. So that's yeah. the SMA. Okay. This right here is a little push button. Okay. So now we have... A row of resistors and a row of these green and this tan thing. The re the capacitors all yellow. And if you look on one side, uh, now that's where I was going to go with this. When you're doing a when you're building a kit, and learning a solder, whatever. But one of the things you got to have is excellent lighting. We got pretty good lighting here. Uh, I, although I would li prefer a little bit more spotlighting if i was soldering but we can't do that with a video because it just you know glares um but the other thing is you're going to have good vision you got your eyes are got to be okay if your eyes suck like mine 
you got to have a decent subscription uh, prescription on your glasses. You know, you can't go and build a kit with five year old prescription on your glasses. So you should, you know, have a nice pair of recently refreshed <laughs> lenses yeah. so that you can actually see something. Clean your glasses. Off. Yeah. And, and I just I clean my glasses just before we, we went into this. OK, now I have a little lighted magnifier with a with an in, with a built in little extra magnifier. There's actually two magnifications here. And so when I'm reading the tiny little numbers, on one side it says K1K. Well, that doesn't make any sense by the parts list and thing. But see the other side, and it says 104. And the 104 is the code. 104 is just like reading or sort of resistor. It's a 1 and a 0 and four more zeros. So that's a point. 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Um, so that's how it goes. But all you got to do is look for the three digits, and that will tell you what it is. So in this case, this is a uh, 471. So that's a 471 is a 470 picofarad capacitor. So this one here must be a 22. One. You must add those female shells in here. Two two one. Okay. Two two one is two hundred and twenty picofarads. I probably did. You took that with a preliminary kit, I yeah, bet you. And I don't remember us bring them in. Yeah, so you must have. So there is three two two ones. Just double checking to make sure they're all the same. And this guy over here, knowing the parts list, is I know that's a six eight zero. Or in this case, a 6.8 with no zero. So it's, that's a 68. Okay. That leaves us with now with these green things. And if you look at them, these are these are inductors, chokes, axial chokes. And if you look at them, you got a 2.2. Two, um, there's a red, red. So that's 2.2. Two. I'm just going to put a 2.2 two, two and I'm not going to do anything with it. This one here has got a green, blue. Okay, which is five, six, same as the color code of a resistor, which you should know. You're a, you're a builder. You should know that. Okay. Uh, this is a one, a one brown, black. Okay, brown, black. So that's a one, zero. And this one over here is a yellow, violet. That's a four, seven. That one's brown. Yeah, it's a tan body. Uh, yeah. Basically, greens and tans have got different temperature coefficients, you know, percentage, like it might be a 10% a or 5%. Ac um, uh. So in this case, now I know what those numbers are. 2.22 is actually a 2.2 on the parts list. Okay. And that's followed a, a 2.2 two and a gold tells me um, that it's 2.2. If it was 2.2 two, uh, red, red, silver, that would be a 0 0.22, okay? 5.6 in a silver, that's a 0.56. Uh, one uh, brown, black, black is actually a 10. And a yellow, violet, silver, that's a 0 0.47. So now we've sorted out the four inductors. We can go down to the resistors. Um, again, uh, I'm gonna sort of look at, at the colors and see there's a, there's a, brown violet so that's four seven and there's an orange so that's a 47k uh this one is a brown this one got lots of colors to it <laughs> so i'm gonna bypass it but there's another one that's got the same bunch of colors to it oh wait a minute uh That first one wasn't a violet. That was a, that was the brown. That's a that's a brown black orange, which is 10k. Sorry. See again, my glasses weren't weren't up to snuff here. Um, here's one that's got a yellow, um, yellow violet. There's the four points. There's the 4.7k. Um, this is a. Um, this is a green. Um, um, green brown 
So that's a 55-1. That's a 51 ohm resistor. And this last one here, yeah, well, you know, uh, what's the last one? Is on it the green, brown, black? Uh, yeah, okay. green, brown, black, brown, uh, gold. Yep. yep. Okay. So that's a five one zero in gold. It's it's a fifty one. That's actually a that's actually a dummy load. Okay. So now looking at the looking at the board, I see 10k, 4.7, 10k. I see a two uh I see a 100 ohm. So that's this last one here. Now, that's 100 ohms. Now, that's process of, process of elimination. So what I'm going to do very quickly uh, which is something that's, I mean everybody who's building should have at least a volt ohm meter multimeter to check things out so i'm going to turn this on i'm going to go to ohms 200 and i'm going to look at this resistor just because these are one percent resistors so they have lots more stripes and it's a little bit more difficult but i see that's 100 100.2 or something like that so that's 100 ohm i just confirmed that's what it is so there are all our parts all sorted out and the nice thing is if you do that once, when you start building and you can set this, this the whole sheet you can set aside. When you go to get the parts, you know exactly. Now I'm gonna be very careful when I move this over like that. And now I know exactly where all the parts are. I can build this board in you know a few minutes. So we're gonna quickly put my my uh, brass set on the board. Um, now there's a couple of uh, things. I mean, I'm I, I'm not I'm I'm going to do this fast because this is not you know a follow along. This is basically this is, this is our preview, so you get the gist of it, and we'll we'll do the slow part next time. Um, one of the things you want to do, uh, see the the whole the idea is you put these with the the things up so as parts of different height go in there when you turn it over, they're suspended and you know above the bench, so this thing just moves all around. You can. You can solder it the way you want. Um, there is a, a rule of thumb, uh, several different ways, seven different ways of building a board. And some people like to build sections and, and test it out along the way. Some people will put in all the resistors and they put in all the capacitors. Uh, in, in my case, I prefer to build it, you know, you know if, you, if you're slow and deliberate um, and you know, if you sort your parts, you know exactly what they are and where they're going to go and you don't put the wrong one in. Uh, you don't need to test it along the way, especially on a very simple board. I mean, it's just a royal pain in the butt, as far as I'm concerned, uh, on a very simple thing. So the idea is pick uh, pick parts that are the same height and build up. Because as you're soldering, when you get the iron down in there, you want all the low parts first. Because, you know, you're trying to go around a high part to get down to a low part is, is bad. So... Um, or even inserting them is, is difficult, okay? Because you're going to solder mostly from the back, and at the back, they're all the same height, pretty much. Um, but putting them in, if you got, you know, high things, and you got to get a, a resistor in there, it's, it's just more difficult. So so pick off all the things that are low, like the resistors. And in this case, since they're all pre-cut, pre-formed, I'm going to take, I'm starting at the top of this board, and I'm going to go right down here. And in this case, I'm going to put a 10K resistor in. Now, because I'm doing the same level, I can, you know, I, again, I'm going to show you. See, it's very simply, I can take those things off because when I put this down here, I'm going to just spread the, spread the leads apart a little bit. I'm going to put another one. I'm going to put in the 4.7K, which is next on the list. So I'll put the 4.7K. Some people like to have the colors all going the same way. I don't really care. Um, they work uh, the same both ways. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's, it's also, sometimes it's, it's, it's if you have a nice pair of, of I have a nice pair of square nose serrated uh, uh, pliers. I can just sort of give it a give it a little pull to snug that resistor right up against the board. Okay, so I got two of them in there. Okay, I'm going to go for another 10k, which is the next one on the thing. You notice I didn't I didn't even have a schematic here. I don't have a parts list. I'm all the parts on my billathon boards. 
are written right on the board. So I'm looking, the next one here is 10K. So I'm putting in a 10K. I'm just following the board. Okay. Now I could, I could put all the resistors in and then start soldering, but you know, I don't think I'm going to go that crazy. Uh, actually, I've only got two more resistors, so I am going to go that crazy. I'm going to put them all in. No, you can't put the 51 in. You go to go do the 100 next, which is down on this list, and I'll tell you why we don't want to do the the 51 yet because that's special. The 51 ohm resistor is a is a cheesy dummy load for this thing. Okay, but this is a real live transmitter, and you could put it on the air. So in that case, you don't want a dummy load. You want to be able to yank the dummy load to be able to put it on the air. So now here we're back to this thing again. Okay, see when I go to solder, this board is all kind of wiggly. So eh. okay, probably would behoove me to put them back on again. But you can see how these are really easy. Now, uh, you know, if you're putting it into a vise, you know, you gotta you know chuck it, unchuck it. If you got one of those rotating thingamajiggies, um, you know, putting it in and out, I just yeah, I just like I like these. These are my invention. I love them. And uh, you're not going to talk me into it. I have a collection of old circuit board vices. I must have at least 10 of them sitting under me, underneath my bench at, at the shop. Mm -hmm. I do not use them anymore. So again, a little bit of solder up there. Lay that so the solder's touching both the pad and the trace. Wait a second, feed a little. I, you know, once I feed it, I also keep, this, keep the heat there for just a little bit before I get away. So I can see that start to flow. I add a little bit. Uh, my my dollop went away. So I'm going to do another one. What uh, what frequency is this on? This is on 20 meters. Okay. Seven. Seven. No, 14. 14. Okay. So where, uh, approximately where? 14050 or 14060. 14 I forgot which crystal I put in here. This is a Yep, 14050. Okay, and I got one more set of pins. I'm going to, I've done three. I'm going to just clean my tip and put a little bit more dollop on there. I have a very, very fine tip on this thing. Um, most likely, your soldering iron won't be, uh, won't have a very sharp tip. But I do a lot of fine stuff. So, oh, they're all soldered. Now I'll take my my flush cutting pliers this is the most important aspect of cleaning this board up is is to put put your finger on top a finger on top of the part you're cutting and then cut it okay so i can pull it away and the part comes with me it doesn't fly off if you just cut it off it was going to fly who knows where and it could end up in your eye or somebody else's eye or in the other case down on the carpet and later on, if you're like now, I'm in stocking feet. So if I walked on it and got one of those things, you can get a nice, you know, um, you can get a, <laughs> those those leaves would go right in there. And I was always the guy who, who um, here's what I found from our kidding experience. Oh yeah, Only one of those got me in the foot, like so half a resistor. Half a resistor got you in the foot. Yep. Yeah. See, we're in a we're in a stocking zone up here in Steve's <laughs> attic here. Oh no, my solder came and messed up my things, but fortunately, fortunately I can put them all back. Okay, watch out! Don't let that gram. See, my solder got a little bit long there, so let me pull that back. Okay, so there's four resistors. So I'm going to pick off things that are roughly the same height again. So I'm going to take the. We can't do the. Oh, yeah, we can do the two point two. That goes in here. There's the 2.2. You notice I haven't had to cut or or form these parts. They're they're all done. I I had to buy to do that in these learner solder kits. I had to buy five different machines to take and and form parts off of spools of parts. And some total, I think I got over two two grand in those machines. I bought them used. Um, let me just pick up the fifty six. So the fifty six is uh, where in the heck is it? Four, oh, up oh, there is point five six right there, right in the middle. 
Now, I was thinking about going and talking to the optom optometrist about getting a <laughs> new prescription. New prescription. <laughs> yeah, a new prescription. Okay, now I got a 10, which goes down. Here. Now, see, I'm, I'm starting to now have a problem with trying to get my parts in with these very tall pieces. So I'm going to pull them aside for a minute and put in my 10. And that's the idea about that is I could just move them someplace else. Say I could move them on the side um, and make them be out of the way. So the last one is a four point uh, point four seven. So there's the point four seven. So there are the topes. I'll just swing this around and put it right there in the middle. Of the chokes and now i can go after those guys well that one fell down a little bit and i see that before i soldered it i didn't spread it up enough okay so now it's now it's good i'll clean my clean my part on my tip nice. it's not gonna hurt if it's not flush on no the no i just you know it's nice to have it nice and neat that's what you're going for right Right. So again, now the idea is, see, I can spin this around to get my my soldering iron just exactly where I want to put it with the pad and the leaves. I can change it instantly. Very, very convenient. I think that's probably the most important thing is you have to be comfortable. You know, in, in the case, I'm using my elbow here uh, as a rest here. A lot of times I'm using my my palm as uh, the back of my hand as a rest. So so I'm not really, I'm not doing this. So when you got a high board and you're doing this, you, you know, you got shoulder, you're everything's rested on, rested on something. So that you're you got nothing being rested. So uh, in this case, I'm pretty lazy here. I mean, everything is pretty, I mean, my both my arms are sitting on the table. Um and I just have to, I just have to raise my iron just a little bit. Um, Whatever you need to do to make it stable, right? Yeah, but to be comfortable. The minute it's like, you know, there's all kinds of. I do a lot of carpentry work and whatnot, and you, and you you see all the the safety posters about you know guys stepping over a pile of wood to to cut a piece of wood on a on a yeah. chop saw. <laughs> no, 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 no. You want to be totally comfortable with what you're doing because. It could spell disaster. In this case, I mean, the thing is, I mean, this is a relatively simple little board, so it's not a big deal. You're not going to get too tired making it, but going to burn your fingers. Uh, but still, uh, by by being totally comfortable and relaxed when you're doing this, um, it just allows you to do a better job soldering. And. There's it. There's all the uh, there's all the chokes, so I can cut those off again. I'm putting my finger over each part. I don't want those leads flying. I'm cutting them close to the board, and then you can just knock them off, and there they are. So, geez, I mean that's half the that's half the board already. Okay. Um, the other things I'm going to go after now are the sip sockets because they're low to the board. This is where it gets tricky uh, because it's you can't hold on to this part unless you got teeny tiny little hands uh, while you're soldering and it's gonna wanna fall out. So you have to resort to some little tricks. And I'll show you the biggest the biggest trick about, about uh, these sip sockets is sometimes it's easier to find something to plug into them to hold on so in this case i'm going to go get one of these this 471 this 470 picofarad capacitor i'm going to take that and i'm going to plug it into this sip socket use that to hold on to it well if i did now i got i can hold on to it you know much better now but the problem is if i go to solder this pin it's connected to this lead and that's connected to my finger. <laughs> so by heating that up, you can come down here and burn the crap out of your finger. So you want to solder the middle pin, let's say. Just okay. to tack it in Just place. to tack it in place. So I'm going to put it in where it says 20 meter extal. This is the extal socket. 
I'm going to put it into play. Well, uh, and then I'm going to I'm going to hold the part. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that. Okay. You can see I'm holding the part with my finger underneath. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my solder. Let's, I, I have to liken this to a I liken this to a to a, to a, a spitting cobra here. I got the solder now and I'm looking at this part and I can see that I'm, I'm wiggling my finger underneath and I can see the three pins are now vertically sticking out of the board. I'm going to go to the center pin and see I don't have to hold the solder. Whoops. Got to clean my thing. Add a little dollar. Whoops. I accidentally hit that. And then I'm going to go after that center pin. And voila, it's soldered. I didn't burn my hand. Now I, I go back and I look at this thing to see that it's, it's I see it's tipped just a little bit. So I'm going to go and I'm going to reheat the center pin. I'm going to try to straighten it up. And I'm looking again, I'm looking at these pins and I can see they look to me like they're coming straight out of the board. And I can look at that and I can say, that's pretty darn good. So now I can put it down and I can clip the other, I can hit the other two pins. I'm going to clean my iron. Now I can take my time and hit them just the way they should be. That center pin really doesn't do much. Uh, ordinarily, a lot of times it'd be cut off. But in this case, I just use that as the one that's our first. So there it is. Now I take that. I take that out. I put it back at 470. And now you can see that the crystal fits in there very nicely. So I'll put that back over there. So that's how you do a sip socket. Now here's a we'll go after the sixth one that's down here. You see under here it says 51. We have the 51 ohm resistor, but I don't want to solder this in because I want to be able to pull the dummy load if I want to go to the antenna and, and actually transmit. So that's where another SIP socket comes into play. And uh, unfortunately, I can buy them as six, but I can't buy them as a five. So I'm going to take my um, I'm going to take my super duper pliers. I know you've got them there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Again, I accidentally buried them. Oh, no. Yeah, here they are. This is my very, my very, one of my most very favorite tools. It's dangerous as heck, but it's, it's a guillotine cutter that uses a utility blade and it cuts straight down. And you could easily put your finger in there and cut the entire finger off. So, so Stanley was the original maker of this thing. I bought this probably 15 years ago and I loved it. And I lost it. I buried it in my shop one time and I didn't see it for like two years. And I was lost. I was lost without this tool. And then I found one at Lowe's. <laughs> Different style. They copied the same thing, same utility knife thing. And so I bought one at Lowe's to replace it. And of course, then I promptly found the Stanley <laughs> back again. Okay. Yeah. But now I had a Stanley and a Lowe's. And then Lowe's, um, they stopped making them, and I found them at Tractor Supply. Then Tractor Supply stopped making them. I think there was a liability issue. The lawyers were after them big time. So I have a collection of these things from all different places. And just recently, um, just recently, I bought these. Whoops. We're looking at the top. I bought these on Amazon. I couldn't believe it. The Sheffield. And if you look at my original pliers, it's the exact same plier. And I think I paid $15 for these on Amazon. I just got this a couple of weeks ago. So that's my backup. I, I, I have this in case of emergency, break glass and get, get these pliers now because I love them. So anyway, the thing about these is the fact that if you look at these headers, they got little, uh, little, um, notches between them and their breakaway but rather than use a breakaway and cut them in and get a raggy edge I just go and use my straight guillotine cutter now with it down I'm I'm okay because I can put my finger close by and I can just cut that one pin off now I have a five pin the one thing you want to watch out for with these guys is you certainly don't want to put your finger there 
but also coming in you could actually hit that tip right there and it's just like you know having a blood test <laughs> you'll bleed like a stuck pig because it's wicked sharp wicked sharp like they say here in maine so now i have a pie pin and i'll do the same thing i'll connect it to the resistor i'll plug it into the five pin and then i can put it on here put it in and i and i can then hold it upside down and do the same trick again so i get my solder make my little make my little uh, cobra up in the air and now i don't have to worry too much about about things but i'm gonna again i'm gonna go after a middle pin okay whoops so that's soldered i can turn it over and look oh geez i got a really i got a high angle so i'm just gonna now clean it up a little bit and that's why you only want to do one pin at a time well that's that looks really nice i like it so now i can put that down put my other leg on my other okay now i can hit all the other pins and that's that's really that's all it takes and the, you know using that coil of solder to you know to come in from the top there's your third hand so you don't really need to you know get some help with that and i noticed that when i'm soldering these pins they're taking a little bit more time to heat up so um I go you know redo them looks good okay so in this case now i got this board so i can i can leave that on here and the transistor will now run into this 51 ohm dummy load or i can yank it and put a cable and connect it to the sma connector and go out to an antenna okay so i'm just gonna i'm gonna actually i'm gonna i'm gonna cut this off a little bit No sense having it stick way out over the board. And I'm going to put it right back on again. Well. There. So that's that's the 51 ohm dummy load. We have a couple more headers, which are a little bit different because we have these. Um, some of them are important and some aren't. Um, uh, this little three pin header uh, that is that is the what I said was the power switch so we're going to take that over on this other side here and since I put this the jumper on I can actually put my finger on the jumper and hold on to it and again not burn my fingertip when I try to solder it so I can I can solder with relative impunity there clean my tip get a little bit of a little dollop come in and look at it now the big thing is you want to, that you want to to mind is don't put too much solder if you put a whole bunch of solder there you got a big blob up there you don't need but just a little bit so in this case i'm just gonna clean it up and make sure it's vertical whoops it's not vertical uh see i'm 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 looking i'm checking the the verticalness um that looks pretty good to me so now i can go back and i can hit those other other two pins and just you know i just just add a little bit for flow and then get the heck out of dodge okay so that was that was the three pin header we got a two pin header over here which is going to be even more interesting I do happen to have another jumper for it so I'll put the two pin jumper on I'll put it right there again hold it with my fingers get my nice little Cobra mechanism out okay and I'll see if I can't do this so that you can see it better um, and iron dollop solder it's in look at it it's leaning a little bit to one side straighten it up again just working with that one pin now i like it 
I'll, I'll solder the second pin. And I'll wait for that to cool. And because that first pin was kind of dodgy, I'll just go back and just put a little bit of a little bit of solder on my iron. And I'll re-hit that, that first one. Just to know I, I hit it nice. So there we are. Those are the toughest ones to do. Now we have the there's a pH for uh, if you wanted to somehow come off this thing and, and possibly go into some sort of a um, set of headphones or something. There is a way to modify this to be a transceiver. It's pretty pretty dodgy, but um, I, I put the option there and so someone wants to play with it. And there's a K, there's a K uh, prime right there, which is actually a second key. So you can actually have a real live key. And you can connect it where a K is. So let's let's put that let's put that jumper there. So I'm going to take the jumper off of the two pin, put it on this one, and I'll put that where it says K prime. I'll hold it again from from under the side. I'll go up and get my nice high. My solder starting to my solder starting to bark at bark bark at me. Come on. Okay. Now I got to remember where it is. Okay, now see, I, see that so the solder's actually stuck to it, so I'll just give it a little double check it. I like it. It's up in the air, straight up and down. And I'll just do the second one. Like that one. I'll wait for it to cool. I'll go back and do the first one. There. So I'll put this back over on the other connector. So now you can use one of these two pin connectors and you can build a cable you can build a cable to go out to a, to a real live key and not use this push button okay that's just something that something extra to play with now we'll do the key over here just because we've been talking about it so here's a little push button so I'll cut that off and I'm going to take my my pliers and I'm going to bend this other pin out at a 90 degree angle I'm just going to shorten it just a little bit. I don't want it to be quite as long. Putting my finger over it so that things don't fly. And then I'm going to put it in here. Orientation doesn't make any difference at all. Okay. Fits in nicely. I think I'm going to turn it around though because I see my little, my little thing that sticks out is going towards that other trace. So no sense... No sense getting it close, I'll go the other way. So while the orientation of the switch doesn't make any difference, this particular thing, I like the idea it doesn't go anywhere near a trace. And so again, I'll just spin the leads out a little bit. And now in this case, because it's, it's see how it's, I'm gonna put one finger on the board like that and I'm gonna wedge it. So now I've again got it relatively stable and I can just, Go there. I see a little bit of a bead of solder there. I get that right? Yeah. Okay. You soldered something. Yeah. Whether it's the right something or not, that's a different question. There. Okay. It doesn't take much. And I'll go in, finger over the lead, cut it off. Now I've got my Morse code key. So it's self-contained. So you can take this out of your pocket and it's got a nine volt battery. You know, you can either, either with the dummy load in play, you can actually send code. And if you're sitting in a hand fest or something, you can tune a receiver to 14050 and you can actually hear you. You can check out a receiver that way. Okay. Or you can pull that thing out, plug it into an antenna and see if you, see if you can make anybody with 35 watts, uh, milliwatts. Okay. We're getting down to the, the, the end here. We've got, we got only a few things left to do. Um, we got that. Capacitors, we got capacitors. Yep. Yeah. So we'll do some capacitors. So in this case, I'm going to go from the top and work down on this side. The first one is a 220. Now I'll put that in. We are coming right up on 60 minutes. 60 minutes. Oh, okay. And we've got a we got a two hour window. I think. We have a two hour window. We we've had in the past. Here's another 220, which goes down here. Well, we're probably going slower when we've got people. 
questions. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to use the whole two yeah. hours. Plus, we talked about some other things here. So, we got another 220 that goes over here. Are you going to talk about your uh, tools and stuff a little bit more? No, I, I didn't do a lot. No, I yeah. think I'm going to I'm going to put in we'll, we'll post this one up and yeah. I think yeah. I'll do a short video and I posted uh, I posted links to the tool talks. Yeah. Um, and so I think where did that I thing just go going? somewhere. I just heard it. Oh, it's up here. It's over here. Wow. That thing really flew. OK, so here's a 470. Let's just go way up there. And the 68 is over here, 68. Yeah, we did a tool thing last time. That took another time. Okay, now, now it's getting pretty darn wiggly. So I'm going to put my blocks back on. I'll put them back on. Okay, now I got a nice stable platform. I'm going to straighten out my solder, clean my tip, and I'm going to go after. Again, moving this around to make sure I get a nice, comfortable place to come in with my little bead of solder, hit the pad in the lead, add a little bit more, do the same thing, a little bit more go to the top here. I'm coming in from this side. And I'm watching, I'm watching how much solder ends up on the pad. Again, I spin it around and I come in here at this angle. I like it. And I'm watching that fillet build and I'm watching it whip down into the pad. And when I see it's whipped down there, that's when I, I, mm -hmm. I get out of there. I stop feeding it solder. And you only give it just a little bit. And I got one, oh, I got one more, which is right where my thing is. So I'm going to pull it off and just move around the corner. And now I've got clear sailing to get into these, these guys. You should get in the habit of cleaning your tip, you know, after every, you know, three or four parts or whatever. Um, and you'll find that, you know, your solder, your solder joints will look a lot nicer uh, when you clean the tip. Okay, so now I got them all in there. One, two, three, four, five soldered. So I go get cut the leads off again. I forgot to bring my short wave receiver, so I can't really test these out. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't bring my. Uh, I brought up this stupid little USB thing that doesn't go down to twenty meters. Six. okay all right look at that i mean we're doing we're looking pretty good right now um we got a couple more capacitors over here we got some point ones which are on this on this um strip so i'll cut those off i'm gonna hold on to them because they all go flying so you cut the first lead no problem cut the second one hold on to it so i'll put those in where the point ones go Another point one. Now here's the case. I'm I'm working around this this connector. I probably should have put these capacitors before I put that header on, but it's not that bad. It's not that big of that big of a of a hurdle. There's the two capacitors. Um, that's starting to look pretty good. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go. Yeah, I think I can get those. I think I can get those with the wedge method. So I've got my hand really pressing down the board there. So the board is relatively stable. Right. Let's see, I'm again moving around. In this case, I, I don't have the luxury, but I'm going to try moving the board with my little uh, brass set. You can just spin the board all you want. In this case, I have to keep moving my iron around to get to the place where I want it to, to hit. 
Okay. That's looking pretty good. What do we got? We got a transistor. Woohoo! Now, here's here's the thing where it's going to be hard. See, this resistor, this transistor wants to fall in and out. I want it to be slightly off the board. You know, I don't want it to be all the way down because that's, you know, I just, if ever you have to remove a transistor, it's a lot easier to cut the transistor away, unsolder the pins, and then put a new one in. And that's, it, it's so much easier. If you, if you got it all the way down there, a lot of times you have to destroy a trace on the board trying to get it out. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down on the bottom side. I'm going to take my square nose pliers. And I'm going to make a little right angle turn on them. So I can drop that. I've taken my hand away in that resistor now. I mean the transistor. You can see it is being suspended on the bottom of the board. By those two little right angles. And now I'm going to put my blocks back because... Yeah, I think we ran into that once before. I had to bring my my uh, weather. my little Sony one back. Yeah, it has all the weather bands, but not. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna double check. Whoops. First doesn't power on either. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna double check my transistor. It looks good. It's uh, oriented right, so I can. It's pretty good there. And it's being held in nicely by those little right angle things. And I can see that wick right up that transistor lead because the transistor leads are tinned. So you can actually you can actually see you know when things start to 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 melt, and that's when you want to add a little, little bit of extra solder. Um, and again, not too much. I'm going to clean those leads off. Those little right angle things I put in there are now knocked off. And gee, we got an SMA connector to put on. Now, again, here's the problem. I got my I got my finger on the SMA connector, and all these other pins are connected to that SMA. That's the ground. So I have to go do the center pin if I'm gonna if I'm gonna make this happen. Before so burn yeah, before I burn my so you don't definitely don't want to do the outside. So let's wrap this around. Get myself my little cobra. I'm gonna go for that. I'm gonna put a, a little bit bigger dollop of solder this time because that's a. And I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna heat that up. And. There it is. Okay. And that's the center pin, which I'm not touching with my finger. So now it's perfectly held in place. And I can go do all, all the outer ones. And you'll notice now, see, I'm 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 a, I'm on the outer connector, uh, the outer pin. And when I go to the solder, you'll notice that nothing's really happening. Because that is a very good heat conductor, that pin. And that heat is going right down into that whole SMA. If I had my hand on it, it'd be hot. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be patient and and not not get too too rambunctious. You have to wait for that thing to heat. I'm going to add a little bit of solder between the two, trying to get that pin to accept the heat. And that looks good to me. I'm going to do that four times. You have to be patient and again not feed it too much. Uh, I use this is 0.8 millimeter, which is 031, I believe, uh, solder. Um, you can get some stuff that's thicker. Mm -hmm. I don't like thick solder, and you can get stuff even smaller, which I don't like either. It's sort of like having thin spaghetti. You can have ultra thin. Uh, I don't know. Um, Okay. I like the thin spaghetti. I like thin spaghetti, so I use the O31.
Now, to, to fit this into board prep, let's see what do we got. Everything's standing up. Uh, this is very important. Uh, we got one more lead, to, but but now I wanna I wanna make sure none of these pins are too high. But I've got a very nice set of this is a very nice pair of Ace Light um, flush cutters. You do not want to cut those connectors, those connector pins. Those are really heavy duty. So you want a pair of pliers that you know you reserve for that because you're going to end up with some holes in them. You know where where it deforms where, the, where's the throat. The so you want a cheaper pair or an older pair. Uh, so I'm looking through my, my toolbox here, and I'm looking for a pair, a pair of, here we go. This is a pair of $3. $3. They're made by the same company that makes these nice um, square nose pliers that I love, but these aren't all that great. Okay. So, yeah, I can sacrifice those. And I'm going to, and this is the other thing too, that's going to, that probably is going to hurt because that thing is going to really snap. So I'm going to go down there. And I'm going to cut those off. But see, I've got a, these are a much beefier pair of pliers. And I don't really care. So I'm not going to use them on those smaller parts. You don't want to sacrifice a good pair of pliers for those. And I'm going to go after those other, other stand-up headers, too, because they're heavier pins. Um, the, the SIP sockets aren't bad, so I can cut those off with my good pliers. Again, I'm keeping my finger. Um, keep all those little shards from flying. And that's it. So we've now made the board. The only thing we have left is we got to add the 9 volt battery snap. In this case, I'm going to pretend like I've got this snap here and I'm going to just do a just do a loop like this. Okay. I mean, I I want to cut that extra wire off. I don't want all that extra wire there, so I, I cut them to fit. I have, again, I have a nice pair of, these are my pref, preferred um, strippers, multi-hole strippers for a small, small wire. These are not electrician strippers for 12 gauge. They're kit builder strippers. They go from 30 down to 22, 20, 20 to 30, smaller wires. So I'll get those things and I'll re, retwist them. I'll take my solder. Get it up in the air. And I'm going to I'm gonna re-tin these. I'm gonna tin these guys up a little bit. Just put a little dab of solder on there. Both of them. And so now I can put them in the nine volt battery holes. And I'm going to bend that over. That's the, I'm putting in the, the black one, the ground. I'm bending it over. And I don't care. This is all a ground plane anyway. So I'm just going to add some solder to that. Clean my tip. And add some solder to that one. And I'm not going to overdo it because I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut that extra wire off. So and now I've got that thing secured. I can put this one in the nine volt lead and it will probably stay put which it's doing very nicely while I solder it in. Cut the extra lead off and that is the WBB transmitter all nice and built. So I can still mm, you got a piece of heavy cardboard? Uh, yeah. Uh, yep. uh, heavy cardboard. Well, regular, regular cardboard, uh, card stock. Uh, well, that's way too heavy. Way too heavy. We don't. We don't. A lot of times, I use the plastic lids from coffee cans or something, and and cut out a little a thin piece of plastic. Uh, whoops, I can still you know those leads on those. Got the lid from my two and two and two. Yeah, that might do. Let's see. Let's see if that fits. I don't think so. Nope, that doesn't quite fit. Oh, 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 that was something else I wanted to show. 
I knew there was something I missed. Something I missed. Here's one of the most... This is one of the, the nice things I have in my... How many shops at Sam's Club? Sam's Club. Well, I used to use Swanson's, but it's way too expensive. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on Social Security. I can't afford Swanson's canned chicken meat. But I, I buy this by the case, you know, the six-pack. Um, I always have it on my shelf because I use it a lot. But the thing about that, with a, with a, with a uh, mint tin board, guess what? It's a perfect bowl holder, okay? And you can do that. So you don't have to have my little thingies here. They're nice. Wouldn't mind you buying them, but. You could use that to do your assembly. I have, I have these, I, when I cut them, the reason I like these is because they, when you pull the lid, you have the little uh, yeah. rim. I have prototyping boards that fit right on this can. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I just, I just discovered that the other day that, oh, by the way, this thing works perfectly in there and it makes a very nice holder for doing your soldering. So get yourself some Swanson's chicken or some Sam's Club chicken or Walmart or anywhere else. Have some nice tuna salad sandwich or chicken salad sandwich. Clean this out, and now you've got a board holder for your for your soldering of this kit next Saturday. Okay. I use, I use those cans for scooping the rock salt out onto the driveway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I I use them. I I have a can that, that yeah I do that, and I also have a can uh, you know one one can of this of, of doggy kibble for the two dogs, and uh, so that's it. But this thing now, I don't I didn't bring a nine volt battery with me. I can steal one, of, but there's the kit with an insulator dropped right in there, nine volt battery, and you have a dummy load. But, oh, by the way, if you, if you look carefully, this this here's the output of the of the, uh, of the circuit. There's actually a trace that goes all the way. Here's the output it goes all the way outside the board, all the way around. So it's got like a three and a half, seven. It's got like a eleven inch antenna around the top of the board oh, before funny. it goes into the dummy load in the antenna jack. So it does have a small antenna. It's not very good before it hits the dummy load. So it's a sloppy dummy load. And it's, you know, it's good for, you know, 10 or 15 feet in a ham fest, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. the guy's got his trans, you know, his receiver, he's demoing, he's trying to sell his receiver. Dial up the 1405. See if it shows up. 1405 yeah. two, and then go back over and, you know, uh, code in his Morse code is uh, his call sign. You know, I did that uh, at Dayton. I I set up a shack right there in the in the uh, Just, yeah in the flea market, and I had my short yeah, receiver up. It's not yeah, it's not really going outside of that. I mean, it's too nope. small. Well, but it doesn't matter because it's FCC legal. That's true. Yeah, the filter on this thing is actually completely legit. So as long as you got the license to operate on. 20 meters. Your ham radio yeah. You're good to go. So the idea about this little nice little rig is the fact that it it's just the perfect size to fit in your pocket. Yeah. So you know you can take it out and uh, open it up, turn your battery on with the little connector here. Okay, and then voila, you're transmitting. Kind of cool. So that's what we're going to be building on Saturday. We're going to do it much slower. Okay, we'll post this baby and let you see it. And then we'll, you know, you can get your parts all sorted and you can do some, you know, do use your resistors and do some, yep. do some practice soldering. Um, the key thing is you want to have enough tools to do the job. So you want to have a decent soldering iron. Uh, yep. In this case, I think I paid about fifty dollars for this soldering station uh, in nineteen ninety five, yeah, but you can still buy a better version of this from the same company for about sixty five dollars. Yep, and they don't they don't tend to go bad. No, I mean if you buy something decent, unless you, you like solder the wire to it or something. Oh yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you abuse it, it's not going to last. But the thing is, I mean, this thing has been. You know, as I said, I got three three of his brothers. Yeah. Okay, uh, I got four identical ones just like this, and I've used them on and off in various shops that I've had and build a thons and everything else. I've used them for um, over 20, 25 years. Yeah. My daughter is younger than this soldering iron, she's 23, <laughs> <laughs> just graduated from college. So, uh, yeah, um, 
But uh, the other thing I was going to show is the fact that I also, you don't ha it doesn't have to be. Here's another iron that I like. This is, I mean, it doesn't have a, a, as fine a tip on it, but it is replaceable. And what you want to look for is one that's, you know, that's replaceable. Um, you actually have to heat it up a little bit because this has been stuck on there. So, um, but it doesn't have the little set screw on the end. If you got a set screw on the end of the iron, run away very quickly. <laughs> it's not a good iron. But this one has alligator clips. It's a 12 volt iron. I love this iron. And I, I think I paid $16 for it. Okay. I haven't been able to find them again because the company I bought it from, you know, it's a 40 watt iron at 12 volts. That means it's about, you know, it's about three, three amps. Yep. Um, but the thing is, I mean, when I go to a ham fest and I have a booth in the building, but I can't afford the $65 they want to charge for electricity, I bring my car battery. You know, I got a, a sealed gel cell from a wheelchair. Okay. It's a 35 amp hour battery. I stick that up on you know, under the bench. I put the sucker on there, and the thing lights up, and uh, and I'm soldering all weekend long. That does the trick. It does the trick. I also have a, a butane iron, which I love. So, um, it it doesn't require a lot of money, but you should have at least one iron that's decent. If you're trying to do this kit and you're paying six dollars and ninety five cents for the iron, I can guarantee you, you're gonna be frustrated beyond belief. I've tried, I've tried all kinds of them. I bought them at Home Depot. I bought them at Tractor Supply. I bought all those cheap irons thinking, well, maybe one of them is going to be decent. And right. and they're very good. They get nice and hot. They're, they're 35, 40 watt irons. And they're great for melting plastic or, or maybe even, you know. <laughs> wood burning. I don't know if it gets hot enough for wood burning. But, but the thing is, they're not really very good soldering irons. So. You want something if you're gonna if you're gonna enjoy this hobby, just like anything else. You don't want to go play tennis if you're gonna enjoy tennis. And you don't buy a three dollar racket because yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna have a good time playing tennis. You gotta have the right stuff, um, and it doesn't require much. And I say you go to my tool my tool tip page that's on WBB Learn to Solder, and it's on some of my other Learn to Solder ones. Uh, there'll be a discussion or there's a video of these tools and there's also a, a, a hard list on the web page of where I buy these tools and how much they cost. Um, so you try it, but you know, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I learned, my father taught me how to solder when I was about 10 years old. He was a, a, a electronics guy in the Navy. And uh, I mean, I, I've been soldering and building stuff ever since. I love it. Right. But you got to have the right tools. Okay? We'll pick it up. We'll, when we we'll cut it up. We'll, do it. we'll post this sucker on there and I'll let you all know it's, it's there. And uh, I appreciate the, the comments people sent on, the, on, my, uh, on my email. Uh, I've been trying to keep everybody aware. I've, I've had had problems, you know, non existent parts that you know, weren't arriving on time. Last year was circuit boards that got delayed. And I had to go through gyrations to get circuit boards out in time for people. But this time it was those damn, um, pardon my French, those polyvericon capacitors. You can only buy them in China. Uh, well, you can buy them, but they cost a lot of money here in the U.S. But uh, anyway, so that's it. Hopefully uh, we'll see you on Saturday.